Before humans dared to boldly go where no one had gone before, mostly because they were afraid of turning into cosmic goo, scientists had a brilliant idea. Why risk a perfectly good human when you have a readily available supply of monkeys, dogs and the occasional confused mouse? It all started in 1947 when the US yeeted some fruit flies into space on a V2 rocket, hoping to see if radiation or sheer altitude would turn them into mutant superheroes. Spoiler alert, they didn't. But they did survive. These flies probably bragged about it to other insects for years to come. By 1949, monkeys entered the scene. Albert II, a rhesus monkey, boldly went where no primates had gone before. 134 kilometers into the cosmos. Meanwhile, Albert the first flights didn't even make it out of the atmosphere. Then there was Yorick, who actually survived. He got some press. Finally, a monkey who didn't end up as a crater. Then came Patricia and Mike, who were launched into different positions to see how acceleration affected them. Patricia and Mike had a much happier ending though living out their days at the National Zoo. The US then doubled down on sending monkeys aloft, resulting in some hilariously named missions like fee fi fo fum and Fooey, where pocket mice who orbited the moon on Apollo 17. Meanwhile, squirrel monkeys like Gordo and Baker, Gordo's mission ended in a tragic nosedive into the ocean. Baker, however, became a media darling, even getting married. Yes, really. The Soviets, on the other hand, decided that dogs were the superior spacefaring species. Apparently, monkeys were too fidgety, as if being strapped to a rocket wouldn't make anyone a little bit scared. Dejik and Chezhen, the first canine cosmonauts. They came back alive, a real victory for Soviet science and dog kind, Smelia. This dog ran away the day before launch. Luckily, she had a change of heart, or maybe just got hungry and returned allowing the mission to proceed. Imagine the paperwork if she hadn't. Bobbik, aka Zib. This is where things get truly hilarious. Bobbik escaped before launch, so they grabbed a random street dog and named her substitute for missing dog Bobbik. And then there was Laika, the most famous and tragic of the Soviet space dogs. She orbited Earth aboard Sputnik 2 in 1957, with no way to return. She became a global icon, a furry martyr for the space race. France then entered the fray in 1963 with Felicity, the first cat in space. She became a feline trailblazer, surviving her 15 minute flight and earning a bronze statue decades later because nothing says thanks for the involuntary space trip like a statue. Two tortoises circled the moon in 1968 aboard Zond 5, probably wondering why they were speeding through space at 16,000 kilometers an hour instead of enjoying a nice nap. In 1973, spiders Arabella and Anita built webs in zero gravity on Skylab 3. Skylab 3 also had fish on board because why not, I guess? In 1970, NASA launched frogs onto the orbiting frog Otolith, the OFO to study motion sickness and zero gravity. In 1991, jellyfish were sent on a nine day adventure to uncover the mysteries of how bodies, both squishy and not so squishy, adapt to microgravity. And let's not forget the ultimate underdog, C. elegans, a tiny worm that not only survived the tragic Columbia Space Shuttle disaster in 2003, but also became a frequent flyer on the International Space Station. Then came the chimpanzees, Ham and Enos. These guys were put through rigorous training and actually had to perform tasks during the flight. Ham even had a malfunctioning spacecraft, but he handled it like a pro. These chimps paved the way for human spaceflight. So, the next time you look at the stars, remember the furry, feathery, and sometimes slightly confused creatures who helped us get there. I hope you liked this video, and please don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it helps us a lot. Till next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day.